All right, everyone. So I'm going to give you a game plan here for the week ahead. Uh, as you know, last week was a relatively slow week in the market. Uh, I've been on my traveling trading station here for most of the week. Um, I'll be back in my office on Monday, though, which will be nice. Um, not that I mind traveling or being on the traveling trading station. I mean, I, actually, it's really not a big deal. Uh, the only thing is that these monitors... Uh, that I use, these are ASUS HDMI, well, uh, sorry, USB monitors. They're super thin, which is great. But in terms of total size, they're just not that big. I think they're like, I don't know, maybe 12 inch or something like that. I, mean, I don't know, I don't even think they're 15 inch. So they're a little small. So it's nice to be on a bigger, um, you know, with my bigger monitors at home, which are 24 inch. But, uh, but other than that, the, the last few days trading on my traveling trading station, uh, we're fine, except the market was slow. So I think what we're going through right now is just part of the natural ebb and flow of, you know, hot markets and cold markets. We had an incredible run in February, which ended up being my best month in, I think, over a year. Um, it was really a super solid month for me, which was great that, to have such a good month early in the year because it helps build a cushion. Uh, but that continued to the first week of March, and then the second week started to cool off. And as is typical for me, when it started to cool off, I incurred a couple of losses. And then rather than just take my foot off the gas, I sort of doubled down to try to recoup those losses quickly, and I dug myself a hole. So I went down $30,000 in two days of trading. And this was uh, not this past week, but the week before. So I've now recovered... Uh, quite a bit of it, but uh, not. I don't think I've recovered quite all of that loss because last week was really slow. My daily goal is 5,000, and I actually didn't hit it even one day last week. I think my best day was $3,000. So last week was a green week, which is great. I have now, you know, roughly, I think, eight green days in a row since I had that, um, that big loss or that big drawdown. But the problem is, you know, I was able to lose 30 grand real quick and I'm not able to make it back real quick because now the market has cooled off a little bit. So each day, what I'm doing when I'm sitting down is I'm reminding myself to be patient, to be patient in waiting for really good quality setups and to be patient in the fact that I'm going to be sitting in a drawdown for a little longer than I might like. Being in a drawdown creates a sense of discomfort. You, know, you have a sense of loss, you lost some money, you feel frustrated, disappointed. You don't feel like, you know, you don't feel like you're on top of the world the way you do when you're at all time highs in your account. And the fastest way to feel better is to make back those losses immediately. And then you don't have to deal with any of the feelings of, you know, feeling like a loser and feeling frustrated and disappointed and this and that. Uh, but right now, the best thing for me to do is to be patient and just to let myself sit with the drawdown because trying to force it is not going to give me better results. So, you know, that's kind of my two cents on the condition of the market right now. There was, there was someone in uh, the, the chat room at Warrior Trading last week. I don't know if it was Thursday or Friday, but they said, Ross, this feels like the slowest week I've seen. And I've been here for a couple of years. I didn't register it as being that slow to me. It didn't, I, it didn't register to me as being something so out of the norm that I was like, wow, I have never seen it this slow. But it is true that there were several days last week where I woke up early, pulled up my phone to check the gap scanner, and the leading gapper was only like 30%. And I was like, well, <laughs> that's not interesting to me. That's not a big enough move. As a day trader, I'm looking for stocks that can go up 50 to 100% or more in one day. And I know that that might seem like it's asking for a lot, but we do seem to see that pretty much day in, day out during hot markets every single day. So last week, there were a number of days where I sat down and I just, you know, I, I realized pretty early on that we weren't going to have uh, probably anything super exciting. And I had to make do just and be content with, um, with smaller gains. So I ended up shifting my focus a little bit um, during the week. 
to just trying to hit base hits, even if the quality of the stock was a little lower. Now, this can be a little bit risky. Um, so I'll give you an example. One of the things that I'll often say is to trade highest quality setups, and if there's nothing that's really, really strong, then don't take any trades at all. Just be super disciplined about that. However, when we get into a stretch where the market is really cold, the problem with that mentality of not taking any trades is that you're going to start to, you're, you're not going to be trading anything. And if you're not trading anything, you're going to start getting rusty and you're going to start to feel like then it becomes hard to break the ice after a long stretch of not trading at all. So when we get into this kind of market, I end up adjusting my quality standard a little bit and saying, well, I'll try to trade the best of what is in front of me. You know, beggars can't be choosers. So I'll, I'll take the best of what's in front of me and best of what's available, even though I know to relatively speaking, this is not nearly as um, attractive as what I would typically go for. My standard is low, but but it's better to just hit these base hits than, than to not trade at all. However, since I've reduced my quality standard, I also need to recognize the fact that my accuracy may be a little bit lower because I'm trading lower quality stocks and I probably won't see big, big winners. So to, to mitigate that risk, I reduced my share size. So I continued trading last week. Um, on Friday, on Thursday, most days last week, I, I still had my cap on at 30,000, uh, sorry, at uh, 5,000 shares. Um, previously, I was taking up to 30,000 shares when the market was hotter. So I was way scaled back, one sixth or roughly of you know, full size. And I was still able to do okay with that. Uh, but you know, I, I, was, I was definitely scaled back and that's gonna continue to be the case going into um, this coming week. So this is what my, um, equity curve looks like right now. It's not the prettiest, um, but we do have, and this this technically, wait, was this a green day? Um, yeah, it's such a small green day, it's almost not even noticeable. If we look at it on the calendar, you'll see I made um, $99. It was, I know, it's nothing I would typically, um, oh, 64 after fees and commissions. Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, so finished up five thousand dollars last week was down fifteen thousand the week before so these are my last you know four or five weeks right it's nothing super super exciting um but you know if we go back to this previous view uh, let's see not that view um if we go back to this view here this is the recovery and it is a little slow right now just because of the, con the condition of the overall market. There's nothing I can do about that. The market's cold. You know, I mean, I can't make the market hot, but I can trade accordingly and keep with smaller share size until I make up a little bit more ground. So, you know, I think this is, this is good to see. I wanna be careful that I don't, you know, catch another five or $10,000 loss. This is not a time that I can really afford that kind of risk. It's taking this long to make back, you know, 20 grand or approximately, right? So I need to just kind of keep my head to the, head down, stay focused, disciplined, and try to rally back to my all-time highs. All right, so, and overall, you know, the month of <clears throat> March, in terms of accuracy, looks pretty solid. Uh, one no trade day, travel day, and then two red days. It's not bad. It just happens to be that I let my losses get way too big. And I have some regrets about that. You know, I still am feeling a little bit upset about it. Okay, so that's big picture of where we sort of sit in the market. So now we can look at um, charts and scans a little bit. So our leading gap around Friday, MRNO, um, this didn't end up really giving a lot of great opportunities. Even though I traded it, it wasn't that clean. BAC, B-A-C-K, this one ended up putting in a big move on Friday. Um, it was a little bit later in the morning that you got that move and I had already uh, called, you know, called it for the day, but um, but this did put in a nice move, a little bit lower priced. One of the challenges with these lower price stocks is that uh, for small account traders, these are uh, non-marginable. You, you can't use leverage. So as you know, I have a small account challenge that I'm doing right now. 
Uh, but a stock like this, under $5, you get no leverage on it. So I really don't prioritize this, uh, this video here. I really don't prioritize trading them that much because they're just, um, I can't use leverage. They're too cheap. Even with a big account, I don't usually make a lot of money on these. So back, yes, it made a move, but no trades for me on that. Reddit during the week, we got the IPO, which played out pretty much exactly as I expected, uh, but it didn't trade it because I was I had called it a day earlier and being uh, in the Caribbean here, I wanted to kind of enjoy and relax. So anyways, was happy with how I had done and didn't push it. All right, so the biggest percentage range in the last um, two weeks right now is SWIN, but this stock is at the bottom of that range. So no trades on it. For, I mean, again, you could consider it for a reversal, but I'm not gonna trade that. I'm just gonna look at these and see biggest range, but bottom of the range. This is brutal. Wow, this one dropped from $6 all the way to 59 cents. Um, is it a Chinese stock? Looks as though it might be. Um, so yeah, these are, I mean, it's classic. These companies, just you know the problem is there's some people who are like well this is a no-brainer just to short every chinese stock and you know yeah until you get the one that all of a sudden goes up to two three hundred dollars a share and does it in like three halts with huge gaps so they're not safe to short too much risk and you just got to be careful with it s r uh, sorry sprb Spruce Biosciences, this one's down big time. So, um, and by the way, so this is a, um, the Pomerantz Law Firm investigates claims on behalf of investors. The Shaw Law Firm investigates claims. The, these, <laughs> the Bronstein, Gerowitz, Cross, Grossman. So here's the thing. Someone was saying, oh, it, it looks like there's an investigation going on because I saw one of these headlines. These, you see this all the time. Anytime a company gets bought out, there'll be five law firms that, you know, do a shareholder alert that they're investigating to see whether the deal was fair. You know, there's a whole business around it. Um, so we see this all the time. I, I kind of feel like it's a little bit ambulance chasing type of stuff. They're just sort of grasping at straws and hoping to make some money, but I don't take that stuff seriously. STI, um, this one pulled back a bit, no interest. GMM, 90 cents, not a great daily chart. PBM, $1.10. Interesting daily chart though, um, with those two big tops, but then the reversal. LSF, yeah, super food. Um, and this is a nicely listed stock. One of the problems, there's a couple of problems with the stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange. One, that exchange is much faster to halt stocks that are up 150, 200% with no news. They'll halt it uh, pending the company responding to the price action. NASDAQ never really does that. Almost never. I mean, it happens, but very rarely. But NICE does it a lot. So I'm usually a bit more cautious about trading a New York Stock Exchange listed company uh, in general. And then second thing is once the bell rings uh, and we have circuit breaker halts, you won't see a resumption quote on the NICE stock. So you won't see the possible resumption price the way you do on NASDAQ. Uh, NTJ, sorry, uh, INTJ, recent IPO, but just sold off really hard. This might've actually been an uplist. Uh, sometimes stocks will get uplisted from the OTC market and they don't bring their chart history with them. I have to double check on that one. Anyways, this actually could be interesting for reversal. Um, off the low, INTG, I'm sorry, INTJ. Let's see, let's go into the SEC files and see if we can get some more detail on the number of shares. So, Boy, this print is pretty small. 1.85 million shares. Okay, so it's a pretty low float stock. Um, noteworthy, but anyway, so that one I would keep on 
just as a side chart. You never know. Maybe we'll get some opportunities on it. If we look at the lowest float for a second, sometimes just sort of scanning this, you'll get some ideas of stocks that have been volatile. CRZOO. Um, yeah, it's kind of curling, a little bit of volume picking up there. I don't know. VLCN. I'd have to check the actual float on some of these. They seem very, very low. 70 cents on VLCN too low. SPRC, this one keeps popping up and then dropping. It doesn't seem to hold up. No interest there. Pixie, same thing. Keeps popping up and dropping. No interest. TGL, same thing. I think what's happening on some of these is that the float is super low and traders jump on them quickly, but they continue to kind of just let us down. AUUD, um, not a great daily chart. A little too close to its 200 moving average. I've got the 200 SMA in the dotted and the 200 EMA in the solid purple lines here. Very well respected levels of resistance. HOLO, uh, this one's, you know, it, it was great. This was actually the stock that started our, the hot streak back in, in February. Um, maybe it did, yeah, I think, anyways, February must have been pretty strong prior to that, but it, it, this is February 16th, but, um, but nonetheless, maybe, oh, maybe it began February 7th when it first started to squeeze up. But now this one's pulled back a lot. But really what I'm looking for is the next stock to do something like this. And in the meantime, everything is just kind of base hit trading. I'm, you know, reducing my expectations. I'm not trying to hit home runs. I'm not holding for big, big moves. I'm getting in, I'm trying to get green and then get out and not overstay my welcome. I just think that's the right attitude right now. Um, so kind of indifferent when I sit down each day, I, I'm not expecting anything crazy. I'm not expecting any of these stocks are gonna hit, a, you know, I'm not gonna have my biggest green day of the year in this environment, but I could have my biggest red day of the year if I'm not careful. And that's what you really have to think about is what kind of market is this? Is this type of market that give me my biggest green day? No, what about my biggest red day? Yeah, actually that could happen. If you're not careful, if you take too much size, you get caught in the wrong side of one of these and you get stubborn, it can happen. So something that I would encourage you to do if you're struggling with this, um, the last, last week and the week before when I was really just recovering from this big loss, I was doing these guided meditations on just on YouTube uh, for patience. Uh, for FOMO, if you're missing out, uh, for anger, you could do different ones, uh, but I really do find them to be helpful for me, uh, both in the afternoon after I finish trading, but especially in the morning before I start trading, just to help me get centered and remind myself to be patient. Patience is the biggest one I think right now, because I mean, to me, being a disciplined trader means you have the discipline to be patient <laughs> because, you know, you have to be disciplined in cutting your losses and things like that, following the rules. But being patient requires discipline and being patient is such an important skill to have because when the market's cold, there's just no sense in forcing it. You have to just wait. Now, I'm still going to participate. I'm still going to show up every single day, as always. You guys can count on me for that. But... I'm not going to expect to do anything crazy and I'm going to keep my share size conservative until we start to see things opening up. And once we see things opening up, I'll step up to the plate. So I hope you found this um, helpful. You've got my game plan here for the week ahead and I will see you live streaming bright and early on Monday morning. All right. See you then.